Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to attempt to identify unknown carbohydrates using the Mollish test. The Mollish test uses sulfuric acid to dehydrate carbohydrates, creating an aldehyde. This will now react with the Mollish reagent to produce a violet ring at the interface. We start with our negative control, which is just water. This has two mils of water and five drops of Mollish reagent. We then add in two mils of sulfuric acid. We do not mix. We want there to be an interface between the sample and the sulfuric acid. At this interface is where our purple or violet ring will form. Again, this is a negative control, so there should be no purple ring for this. We will now use our positive control, glucose. This is a 1% glucose mixture. We will add in our two mils of sulfuric acid layered Make sure you don't mix, and we will watch at the interface where the purple ring forms. Again, glucose is a carbohydrate, so this is a positive control. Controls are very important in experiments. You want to make sure that the experiment works properly. If your positive control does not work, then the rest of the experiment is null and void. If your negative control has a positive result, well, that's also an issue. Slowly you can see the purple ring forming at the interface between the sulfuric acid and our two mil sample of glucose here. We now have 13 unknowns. This is the first lab in a series of labs to identify which chemical is in each of these test tubes. This is sample number one. Again, if it is a carbohydrate, we should see a purple violet ring forming at the interface. Three of the unknowns are not carbohydrates. I will provide an alphabetic list in the notes to this video. I would like you to record down all observations. For instance, is there a purple ring? Is there any precipitate? Anything you might notice when you observe the results. Here's sample number two. I'm trying to show you the reaction here. The reaction can take some time, so we will revisit all of these test tubes at the end when the reaction goes to its completion. Sample number three. Again, look at what you see. Record any observations you might notice about this. Anything that might be different than the other samples. Sample number four. Please note, the sulfuric acid is very dangerous. If you perform this reaction in the lab, please do all this inside a fume hood. I'm doing that right now. Sample number five now. With this test, we are only identifying whether something is a carbohydrate or not. We will do some future tests to try and identify what type of carbohydrate it actually is. But for now, let's just identify the carbohydrates from the non-carbohydrates. Now, sample number six.
Sample number seven. Sample number eight. Sample number nine. Sample 10. Sample 11. Sample 12. And finally, sample 13. We will now go through each one and compare it to both the positive and the negative control. Make sure you write down all your observations. Things such as the color, you can see there's different shades of purple, how quickly the reaction happens, whether there's any precipitate. Record down anything that might help you identify what the unknown is. So on the left we have the negative control, water. And on the right, we have the positive control, glucose. Let's start by comparing sample number one. Make your observations. Here's sample number two. Please write down all observations you have. Sample number three. 
Sample number four. Sample number five. Sample number six. Sample number seven. This is sample number eight. Sample nine. Here's sample 10. Sample number 11. Sample 12. And our last unknown sample, sample 13. Now remember, the Mollish test identifies whether or not something is a carbohydrate or not. From this one test, you cannot tell which carbohydrate is which. There will be a total of five tests we're going to use to attempt to identify the different carbohydrates. This is the first in the series. Here we can see a little bit closer all the different samples. In our next video, we will do the iodine test where we identify whether something is a polysaccharide or not. I will add the link at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time.